What's going on, Bourbon World? Hey, we're back at it, ready to have some fun. Before we dive into today, quick uh, couple updates, if you don't mind. A couple updates. Uh, so number one, I want to welcome uh, one of my new patrons, uh, David Cooper. David, appreciate the support, my man. Thanks for uh, becoming a patron. Uh, welcome to the Bourbon Judge. Let's call it welcome to the courtroom, if you will, right? <laughs> so welcome, appreciate you, and thanks again for all my patrons out there supporting the Bourbon Judge as well. Appreciate all the love, the support. Uh, we always have a lot, a lot of fun as well on the, um, on the in the Patreon uh, community. So thanks again for your support. Um, so what has the Bourbon Judge been up to? Oh, man. So Mrs. Judge and myself... Had a fun few days in Kentucky. Had a blast. Uh, I think I drove. <laughs> I drove Mrs. Judge to way too many distilleries, way too many liquor stores, and way too many bars. <laughs> I'm actually having a bourbon-free day after this, <laughs> uh, in order to give my liver a break, just a small break, no bourbon for like 24 to 48 hours, but we had a blast. So we were actually celebrating kind of a late celebration for our anniversary, but we had a, a late celebration and uh, we really enjoyed ourselves. And shout out to my lovely wife for, um, you know, for, for going along and coming to Kentucky. She's not a huge bourbon fan herself, but she puts up with uh, my love of the whole bourbon, whiskey, everything, you name it, right? So she puts up with it. So shout out to Mrs. Judge. Um, next thing I'll say, hey, so I'm actually going to put out a video um, for all my patrons. So on my Patreon site, I'm going to put out a video of really just call it my Kentucky experience. So that'll be available to all my patrons. I want to kind of get share with them just some some best practice, some things that I learned uh, while I was out in Kentucky. Some uh, just some fun little tidbits. But I'll share with everyone here real quick a couple key things. So shout out to really four different companies. Number one. Fourgate, my man Bob at Fourgate, such a great guy. We had a chance to connect with him, break bread, and really enjoy that experience. And then um, when you think about like actual distilleries, so I went to a ton of distilleries, right? A ton. But the three that come to mind, I'm gonna call them out. So number one, uh, Michter's, really enjoy the time in Michter's. Uh, Jacqueline, our tour guide. Annie, uh, just really good people. Thank you, Jacqueline and Annie, for such a fabulous experience at Michter's. Really loved um, the Fort Nelson downtown um, experience in Louisville. The second one, uh, gosh, my man Trey at Barstown Bourbon Company. Fantastic tour. If anyone gets a chance to, uh, to check out uh, Barstown Bourbon Company, you make sure you ask for my man Trey. He keeps it real, and he is a hell of a tour guy. That dude is funny. Um, and last but not least, Boy, this, this lady, she takes it home for me, boy. If I ever move to Kentucky, I'm going to become best friends with Nikki from Peerless. So Nikki is probably one of the best tour guys I think I've ever had. I've been on many tours, so many I can't even count. But Nikki, by far, is probably one of the best tour guys I've ever had at Peerless. So Nikki, uh, super good people. Anyone ever goes to Kentucky, check her out. Super cool. All the history about Peerless. She's just passionate. She's what bourbon's all about, honestly. I, just, I love that lady. So shout out to you, Nikki. Um, all right. So we're going to dive into today six, let's just call them whiskeys, that the bourbon judge just didn't care for. So they're not all super expensive. Some are expensive. Some are actually very reasonable. These are ones that just did not do it for me and me only. I know there's probably a lot of other ones out there. Let me know what you guys think in the comments uh, throughout the video as well. I'd love to know if you agree, disagree. Just, just let me know what, what you're thinking. But uh, again, these are just six whiskeys that just didn't do it for me. Notice, I said whiskeys. I did not just say bourbons. I didn't say rye. There might be some Canadian whiskey. There might be some some um, some regular wheat whiskeys in here, right? So these are just six whiskeys that the bourbon judge. I just don't like them. <laughs> and last but not least, you know I love an asterisk. So of course I'm gonna have an asterisk as my last one. That one I will save the uh, for the end. I'll tell you the reason why. That one might get me in trouble. All right. Let's go. I'm going to tell you why I don't like these either as I go through these. All right. Number one. So the first one is, this is a Kentucky-based product. Davis County. Davis County, a Lux, I should say this is a Lux Row product rather. Lux Row product. Um, Davis County, 96 proof. It just didn't do it for me. And this one's the finish in the Cab Savernay. It's a budget-friendly bourbon. It's only, I think it's just like $45.00. Um, you might notice, like I said, Bourbon Judge, if you don't like it, why'd you finish so much of it? Honestly, the guys came over, we had this one, one night for cigars, 
And maybe with cigars, everyone loved it, except for me, yours truly. <laughs> but uh, we had it with cigars. A lot of my fellas, they, I mean, a lot of the guys I hang out with, they really enjoyed this a lot. I mean, as you can tell, they enjoyed the hell out of it. Uh, it's just one, just didn't really do it for me personally. Maybe it's better with the cigar because it's a little bit sweeter. But um, to me, it just wasn't as well-rounded as I would like for it to be, especially being a luxury product. Granted, it's a budget-friendly bourbon. So, um, you know, it is what it is, but just didn't really do it for me. This is one, honestly, I regret buying and uh, I will keep it on the side and I will make sure I not buy it again. Sorry, Luxro. Hey, I love, don't get me wrong, Blood Oath, David Nicholson. Um, yeah, I, I love those other Luxro products. This is just one I have to push aside. It is what it is. <laughs> All right, number two. Woo, this is a list. All right, number two. Now this one, all of the hype, I mean, you know, secondary prices through the roof, hunting for it, insane to hunt for it. This is easy to find, this one here, the uh, Luxro. But this one, coming out of Buffalo Trace, Weller Single Barrel. Man, you want to talk about hype. You want to talk about just being so overrated. Weller Single Barrel is just straight up marketing at its best. I have to give it to Buffalo Trace because actually, I, you guys know I love Buffalo Trace, right? Each Teller, um, even like Blanton's, straight from the barrel, not regular Blanton's. <laughs> uh, of course, obviously the NT collection. I love what Buffalo Trace does as a whole. Weller foolproof, Weller, you know, uh, one, Antique 107, sure. But this one, come on. Let's keep it very clear and real. As I said in my original video, I'll never forget this one. Take uh, Antique 107, take Special Reserve, the green and red labels, pour one ounce together, mix them up, there is your single barrel. Not worth the hype, it's just not worth it, honestly. It just, it just wasn't, it really wasn't. It's just, come on, it's just marketing. It's just marketing, that's all it is. <laughs> oh man, two down, four to go, plus the asterisk. All right, what's coming in number three? All right, so I own a couple of these bottles. I've had it out in numerous different bars, different versions. I'm sorry. Pinhook. There's nothing about Pinhook that to me is just worth the hook or worth <laughs> worth buying, honestly. They have different uh, different versions of Pinhook that's out there. I love the marketing with the horses on the front, the different you know labels and stuff, and all the different you know verbiage about the horses and stuff. I, I love that. Again, from a marketing standpoint, right? But when I'm talking about the quality of the whiskey, to me, just me only, I've tried Pinhook numerous occasions, as you can tell. I've tried this one as well, numerous times. It, it's just not my jam. And honestly, I can't see myself buying another bottle of Pinhook. It is what it is. I should go back real quick because a lot of people say, well, Bourbon Judge, you finished half the bottle, bottle of Weller Single Barrel as well. Well, I did, but it wasn't just the Bourbon Judge. Because again, because bourbon is all about sharing with your friends so i've had numerous friends at least probably 15 that have tried this bottle each single person had like a little small pour they're like wow it's just not that good marketing marketing just not that good <laughs> all right um uh, hey real quick before i do the last three of the asterisk a couple a uh, couple favors number one hit the like button number two drop me a comment and last but not least please make sure you subscribe to the channel all right Wow, this one's gonna go back from a while. Oh man, you wanna talk about a couple hundred dollars literally down the drain. Uh, I'm sorry, ugh, down the drain. <laughs> uh, let me get the uh, cotton uh, swabs out of my mouth. This is probably maybe one of the worst purchases I've ever had. So, Orphan Barrel Rhetoric Age 25 Years. Oh man, you wanna talk about an overhyped, not great quality, just I don't even know this is just I don't even know this is just bad it's just bad in fact as you can tell I still have half the bottle left um, I've had a few different orphan barrels some are slightly better than the others but none of them honestly are the ones I've ever had just not good there's so much other great quality bourbon out there for cheaper if I could go back in time and not pay $200 on this I would have much rather bought a bottle of Old Carter a bottle of Fourgate um, than wasting my money on this. It's just horrible. I mean, it's age 25 years, but I should have known from the start, 91 proof. 
there's so much water added to this bad boy, you're not even tasting the uh, the whiskey anymore. Saviors, two, three hundred dollars. Do not buy Orphan Barrel. I'm sorry. That's just bad. <laughs> All right, four down, two to go in the asterisk. All right, so this one I've mentioned a couple times. So this one might not be as a surprise. Re remember, this is six bottles of whiskey that I do not prefer and I will not buy again. As much as I love Woodford Reserve, the Double Oath, the Masters Collections, not all of the Masters, but most of the Masters Collection, um, I will never buy a bottle of Woodford Reserve wheat whiskey. I love Woodford Reserve. I love Brown Foreman, you know, the uh, old forest of the whole family, if you will. But this wheat whiskey was a bad attempt at a uh, wheat whiskey product. Just really, really bad. I mean, the, the name Woodford stands for much better quality than that whiskey. I'm just going to keep it real. You guys know me, right? I don't, I don't hold anything back. I love Woodford Reserve, but I'm sorry. You can't put that out with that name, that branding, and what the juice is inside there. So slide that one up there. I don't even know how I'm going to end up getting rid of that. Maybe uh, some mixed drinks. Um, I don't know when, but at some point it's just, it, it will somehow eventually leave <laughs> the bourbon household bourbon judge household all right number six the last one before we get to the asterisk Woo! oh man now i know my, my good friends blake and my man jason from the black bourbon family they might be a little bit upset because this is a chicago based product i'm sorry you guys know you're you're my boys but uh caval just didn't do it for me it was it started out okay i reviewed it. i remember the channel it was okay the first pour i went back had it a couple of the times after that just not good the follow-up typically bourbon you know a lot of times as, as it uh, opens up i should say um opens up over a period of time this one it didn't open up over a period of time it got worse over a period of time <laughs> so the first few pours were decent everything after that whoo Man, oh man, you want to talk about something that is just not good quality? My wallet will never purchase a bottle of o of Caval again. Sorry, it is what it is. I just can't do it. I'm sorry. I can't. Sorry, all my Chicago people out there. You know I love y'all, but uh, not Caval. <laughs> all right. Last but not least. Bourbon Judge, I'm always going to throw out an asterisk, right? And you guys, by the way, you also know I'm going to sip one of these just to make sure I do not like them still. Because you never know. You never know. And I'll pick one. I'm not sure which one, but I'll pick one to sip. But uh, the last one that just didn't do it for me, this one, I might end up sleeping either on the couch or I might end up sleeping... <laughs> <laughs> in my garage <laughs> this one was a uh it was a present from uh mrs judge Shh. i uh i love my wife with all my heart as i said earlier in the beginning of this episode but uh this is one where i wish she uh did not purchase because it was literally taking a few hundred dollars opening the front door on a windy day and just whew, gone with the wind this money will never be recuperated it's just gone gone it's gone <laughs> You want to talk about some great branding. It looks very nice and appealing. You think it's something that's old and rare. Oh, it's rare. It's rare because it sits on every shelf. Rare perfection. Canadian whiskey, age 15 years old. I did it in the blind battle. I think it was with like Hunt and Gather, uh, uh, Calumet, as well as Sam Houston. It came in last place for a reason. Save yourself. A good hundred and sixty, seventy, whatever those was dollars. This is rare perfection. I don't know for who, but not for me, and not for you. <laughs> just not good juice. Oh man, that was just a waste of a buck sixty. Literally a waste. So, you might be wondering, Bourbon Judge, you got six bourbons, or I'm sorry, six whiskeys with an asterisk technically seven which one bourbon judge are you going to sip just to make sure it still does not meet what you refer to as good whiskey all right i'm not even going to go there with any of these i just can't you know what it's been a while since i've had this uh rhetoric orphan barrel let me go ahead and just pour a little bit of this one here rhetoric let's see how this whiskey is let's just see you never know you never know pour a little bit 
Okay, I'm even gonna slide these down. Just so I can put this one front and center. Let's see if the judgment is still in in terms of uh, the quality of this lovely whiskey. Color, nice, misleading, <laughs> but decent on the color. Uh, mm. Gosh, the nose just screams like, damn, bourbon and like bourbon, like caramel, some vanilla, but then it's just like paint thinner. Literally, imagine just you're, you got paint thinner and you have like some 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 whiskey and somehow a little bit of paint thinner just drops in your glass of whiskey. That's what this smells like. Oh God, I don't know if I can even sip this. This is gonna be tough. All right, I normally finish all every whiskey that enters my glass. I don't think that's gonna happen today. Hey, regardless, peace. Cheers, salute. I appreciate each and every one of you out there. To all the ladies and gentlemen out there supporting the Bourbon Judge, I appreciate all the love and support. Cheers to all of you. Oh, gosh. Oh, mm. That, straight up, is disgusting. It's not even do not buy. It is disgusting. And I do not buy. Please save your money if you see any of these. This might actually be literally the worst though. This is actually at least somewhat sippable. It's just way, it's like $100 overpriced. That's my problem with this one. This I think is probably the worst of all of these. Really, 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 really bad. <laughs> Cheers, peace everybody. Talk to you guys soon, later.